In this video, I'll be talking about eight specific hangups for Webtoon Canvas creators, my own experiences and how I've tackled those things, as well as some resources that I've personally found helpful. So let's jump into it. I'll be talking about a bunch of examples, so I'll link the chapters, chapters? Yeah, I'll link the chapters down below. So feel free to jump to the topics that speak to you, or if you wanna hang out for the whole video, uh, please do that. <laughs> All right, example number one, feeling like you're falling behind schedule on your comic. Ask yourself why you think you're falling behind. Have you actually fallen behind yet? Or is that fear stressing you out and causing you to not enjoy making your comic? In what ways do you feel like you're falling behind? Is it physically not posting your comic on the schedule that you planned? Adjust your schedule to accommodate you better. If you feel like you can't adjust your schedule, find ways to make your time more efficient. That is, that is really assuming that you have a limited time per week to work on your comic and you can't add any more hours to work on it. I would always suggest moving the schedule around first, even though my own knee-jerk reaction is definitely to just be like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> but if you're not making those deadlines, to begin with, like you feel like you're falling behind that far, then move your schedule. Like just move the deadlines so that you can meet them better and that it can keep you from being hung up on that point. Like there's other things to worry about. You don't need to be worrying about meeting your artificial deadlines. Just, just stop. So what else can you do if you're feeling like you're falling behind? If you feel like that because your fellow comic artists seem to be more successful than you, well, let me tell you something. Comic making is a personal journey and the only thing that you're competing with is your personal best. So don't compare yourself with others. At least don't be harsh to yourself. That being said, if you feel like you're falling behind your peers, you can instead focus on learning. You can study what they're doing differently and study what's putting them ahead. If you're on friendly terms, maybe you can even just ask them directly. There are a lot of nice creators here who I am willing to bet if you ask them questions that they would actually respond to you and like tell you <laughs> what's going on. Like <laughs> we're a very supportive community here. Like the, it's okay. <laughs> just, yeah. Okay, so example number two, unorganized or feeling all over the place. Have you tried not being unorganized? So my husband, anytime I rant to him about something, his usual reply is to say, well, have you tried to not be whatever the thing that I was ranting about? And it drives me crazy most times because it is it's so annoying when he says it but there there is merit in that simple question of just you know have you tried to not <laughs> do something so yeah the answer to this is to try to not be unorganized set aside some time to do some administrative work for your comic to get organized is your story scattered throughout your workspace on various scraps of paper, napkins, sticky notes, and doodle pages? Cause, <laughs> cause mine are, oh man, I, I am very, I am getting better. I'm getting better, which is why I can talk about this. But yeah, get that stuff organized. You don't have to convert it into the digital folders and stuff on your computer. You can keep it in the physical world and stick it in a binder with sections like beginning, middle, end. And then you can even have a section dedicated to the things you want to include in your story, but you don't know where yet. So yeah, um, have a separate binder for character designs and environments, and then maybe a third binder for your actual comic thumbnails and scripts. And you'd be surprised how much more, or I guess much less chaotic everything feels when you just 
you have like kind of a home for each idea that you have for your story and you actually can find it again, which is, is very nice. Once that is organized, check your workspace again. Is it still messy? Do you feel less stressed? If it is still messy, you, you gotta clean it up. You gotta clean up your desk or wherever you work on your comic at. So for me, it's I have a uh, little home office that doubles as our guest bedroom sometimes. And I need to make sure that my desk stays clean. And it is currently not clean as I'm recording this video, so I will have to go and clean it again later. This also goes for your digital workspace as well. Do you have tons of digital art files just strewn about your desktop and they're not named in any way that makes it easy to find? You need to clean it up. I clean mine up about once a month, uh, mainly because I start to just slowly populate my desktop with random reference photos, artworks that didn't have an immediate home in my file structure set up, rendered YouTube videos, and random text files. So by the end of the month, my whole desktop, you can't even see the background that I have on it because it's just cluttered with files. So decluttering that mess helps me stay clear and focused, and then I'm not wasting extra time trying to find a specific art file or reference, or even just getting distracted from all the, the junk on my desk, you know? desktop. <laughs> if after all that you're still feeling unorganized, go back and check your comic schedule again, <laughs> or you know, lack thereof if you don't have a schedule. Are you failing to meet your personal deadlines? There's a few ways to tackle that. You can adjust your deadlines by pushing them back. Say you're trying to post a new episode of your comic once a week. You can push it back to being once every two weeks. Or if you are just totally hell-bent on keeping that schedule, you can try to cut the length of your episodes. A lot of Webtoon Canvas artists seem to be under the impression that they need to post 60 panel episodes each week to be successful on the platform. And that's just not true. You can post a handful and be totally fine. Heck, you can even break that 60 panel episode down into six parts and now you have a six week buffer. Boom. Of course, just make sure each section can be self-containing. So don't cut your episode in the middle of a conversation, that kind of stuff, but you get the idea. And speaking of, a buffer is probably the easiest way to feel organized and less stressed about your comic. It is also the most tempting thing when you have a good amount of buffer to just say screw it and post it all at once. Around the time of writing the script for this video, I was working on episode 12 of my comic Fairy Lantern, and it was so, so tempting to just post the whole episode without cutting it into parts. <sighs> and it would have been glorious too, because it was 55 odd panels all together, and it was just, oh, it was so pretty. I just wanted to, I just wanted to hit that button so bad. But I had to remember that my goal is to post an episode every Monday, and I definitely can't make 55 panels every single week. So knowing your own limits and respecting them can help curb this kind of stress of feeling unorganized or all over the place. Moving on. Example number three, you're blocked on a specific panel or background. Do you ever just have a certain part of a drawing or a particular background that you just really, really don't want to do? Like you can just sense that you'll have a hard time with it, so you're just avoiding it. Solution, work on literally everything else and leave it for last. This, this will be your final boss, so to speak. 
Don't let it bog you down. Move on and come back to it later. Because if you sit there with it, the other stuff will still need to be worked on. And then the stress will start to build up and you'll start to feel like you're wasting your time. You can do some research. If it's a background that you're stuck on, what part are you stuck on? Is it the angle, the lighting, certain objects not looking right? Find some extra references. I recently had a hard time drawing a kitchen scene. Literally saved it for last because I had a bunch of other panels to work on. And I still felt met about it when I finally came back to it, so I asked myself what made it hard. The answer I came up with was that I was struggling with the perspective. Because the current references came from different angles and I was basically making the angle up from scratch in my head. I started looking for other kitchen photos that had the angle that I was looking for. And these were drastically different kitchens, mind you, but I just needed a good starting off point for the angle. With that out of the way, the rest of the background fell into place and there was a lot less friction. References and 3D models are a lifesaver when you're feeling blocked on a particular background or drawing, so don't be afraid to use them. If you're still feeling blocked on a particular drawing or background, ask yourself if the background or the character is needed in your comic to show the story. Most of the time, the answer is that the drawing in question was going to be a nice-to-have drawing and not something that's fully needed to tell your story. You can give yourself permission to not draw something. I see a lot of comics that literally have just the one establishing scene panel and then no backgrounds until the characters change locations. And this is totally acceptable to do. On the flip side, if you feel like you absolutely need a certain scene in your comic and it's the one that you just so happen to be stuck on, you might just need to roll your sleeves up and do it. Accept that it won't be your finest work and just get it to a legible state where the average reader can understand what's going on. If your comic leans on the more humorous side, you can even stick an author's note on the panel saying, here's my crappy background or budget panel, and you can totally just make it super cheeky and that kind of thing. It might seem daunting now, but it won't always be. See, the whole theme in this video here is that there is a solution for everything, so just stay calm and you've got this. And for the cynics out there, because I know my brain also went there too, yeah, a solution is that you could just stop your comic, but that's not the point of this video. The point is to encourage and remind you guys, including myself, that we can get unstuck, unblocked, and recharged from a burnout. And hopefully these specific examples I'm sharing can help, and if not, hopefully the comment, comment section can open up more discussions on it. These next few examples are all pretty similar in that the methods to handle them can be the same. They're different problems, but the same type of solutions, but I'll still go over each individually. Example number four, story feels lacking. This one is most commonly linked to comparing your stories to others. Reading someone else's story and finding that their storytelling methods and idea is just way better than yours. Remember again that we should be focusing on personal growth, so don't go comparing yourself to others at the expense of your own self-confidence and your own work. Instead, take note of what the other person's story is doing well and see if you can incorporate some of it into your own story. Maybe you liked this person, or wow, well, you like this person, senpai. <laughs> Maybe you liked how this person did tension in a particular episode, so you can take notes on their pacing, panel compositions, dialogue, character expressions, color and lighting, backgrounds, 
and anything really and see how you can apply it to your own story. Your story might also feel like it's lacking due to character depth. Have you fleshed out your characters beyond your story's needs? Given them personalities that start to write themselves? If not, take some time to do that. I'll link some resources down in the description that I found helpful fleshing out my own characters. Uh, they're, they're mostly Tumblr links. Tumblr's awesome. <laughs> if your story still feels like it's lacking, maybe there is actually something missing. Like a special spice in a recipe or a little extra salt. Take some time to just let your mind wander in terms of your story. Forget about what your current standards are for your story and just let yourself think about whatever the heck you want. And try to write it down as much as you can. It will probably do one of two things for you. It will confirm that you're on the right track for your current version of your story. And now you have some fun alternate universe concepts and snippets. Or you just stumbled on something fun and fresh to add or to twist into your story and now you can excitedly work on it, or work it in. This one actually helped me while making Fairy Lantern. I did an exercise where I swapped the roles of my main characters, and it helped me see how to move past a certain scene that I was getting stuck on, because I knew exactly how the swapped character would react, and identified that not knowing how the actual main character would react in the scene was, that was what the hangup was all along. So then I went back and fleshed out the main character's personality more and then knew how they would react to that specific scenario and it helped me write beyond that scene that I was stuck on. Sorry for the vagueness there, I, it would be spoilery if I wasn't vague and I know a lot of people that watch these uh, videos also read my comics. So. <laughs> And after all that, if you're still feeling like your story is lacking, you can do some more research and learning. Much like how you combat art block by going back to the basics and learning more things, the same can be applied for storytelling. I actually learned a lot from a class on Skillshare back before I launched my comic to help me with the storytelling aspect. and. It was really just, it helped me confirm that I was on the right track with everything. Example 5. You find your characters less appealing. Asking yourself why should always come first. Because if you can start answering those questions, you can start working towards a solution to the problem at hand. Do you want to draw your characters in a different art style? Do you want to redesign their outfits? Do you want to redesign them completely? And why are you stuck on it? Are you worried that your readers won't like the new designs or get confused by them? If that's the case, you can make a bridge episode where it's literally just a heads up to your readers to say, hey, here's how my characters used to look and here's how they will look from here on out. I just wanted to draw them differently. Your readers will understand and most of the time they'll be likely to be on board with these changes. Just communicate with them. There's no rules saying that you have to completely start over if your art style changes or that the characters get redesigned. If your characters feel a little flat in their personality writing-wise, try some exercises to flesh them out more. I find some fun ones on Tumblr every once in a while, and I'll link those in the, in the description too. That one was a little short because we covered a lot of the same things in the previous examples. Example 6. Losing interest in your own comic. Again, ask yourself why. I sound like a broken record, right? <laughs> why do I sound like a broken record? But really, ask yourself why. Is your story not sparking joy for you? Are you losing interest because of outside reasons not directly related to your comic? It could be life events, other priorities, a death in the family. Sometimes these things cause us to reorganize our priorities, and that's okay. It's okay to take a break and work on yourself. Other times it might just be boredom and you still need to take a break. Either way, 
take some time for yourself, and when you feel recharged, here are some ways to regain interest in your comic. Anime music video. That's right. Pretend your comic is an anime or epic movie or a video game. I'm going to go with anime because that's what gets me hyped. What type of song would be the opening title for your comic on anime? What scenes from your comic, current ones that you've made or future ones, what scenes play in that anime opener? Does it focus on a certain character or a scene? What kind of feelings do you get watching this anime opener play out in your head? Sometimes you just need to think about your comic as if it were in a different medium and it disarms your brain from all the expectations you've set on it before and it gives you the space you need to get interested in it again. On a similar vein, if the anime music video approach isn't your jam, try writing a fan fiction of your comic. You don't have to physically write one, but think about it from that angle. What parts or characters from your story would a fanfiction author fixate on and explore that? Maybe it's a particular scene in your comic that resonated with your readers that you could totally imagine a fanfic centering on, or maybe it's your characters, but they're in a setting in one of your favorite TV shows. Maybe it's even a coffee shop AU. One that helped me personally when I was losing interest in my comic was to think of Fairy Lantern in the setting of an MMORPG, which worked surprisingly well. Okay, so quick summary. Regan dusts off an old game she used to play with her childhood friend. She makes her new character who looks a lot like herself and uses her old screen name so she's really recognizable. She meets a new friend, Quill, who seems to know her from somewhere, but she doesn't recognize him at all. They go on lots of fun quests together and get into all sorts of shenanigans. Putting my comic in a new setting like this made me think of other things that helped me flesh out the characters and get interested in my comic again. I thought about Regan's screen name, like what it would be, for example, <clears throat> and that set me down a rabbit hole on how her personality at the age of eight would influence her choice of original screen name. What would her MMO RGB RGB? <laughs> What would her MMO RPG character's design look like? It got me thinking about her preferences versus what I, as the creator, would prefer to draw her in. And this suddenly got me making a more fleshed out main character than I had originally had. So the takeaway for this point is to look at your comic from a different angle if you're losing interest in it. Chances are you're stuck and you just need that different angle to get out of the metaphorical mud. But really, take this as an excuse to just go wild with an alternate universe for your comic or a fluffy enemies to lovers slow burn. Example 7. Full lack of motivation to work on your comic. You might be fully burnt out. And that's okay. It's your body's way of going on strike until you treat yourself better. You're not a failure for burning out. There's a lot of causes for it. This may be because you're not resting, not eating well, not tending to other important things in your life. Your life can't be 100% devoted to your comic where every waking minute you're eating, sleeping, and breathing your comic. Everything in moderation. So what do you do if you have a full lack of motivation? Well, after taking care of yourself, you'll need some self-discipline. If you're willing to work on your comic, but lacking the motivation, you really need to push yourself to get that ball rolling again. So the goal is to have the least friction possible to get back into it. First part, take some time specifically dedicated to working on your comic. It could be 20 minutes a day, an hour, a specific time on a Thursday once a week, something. Pick a time and make sure you show up for it. That's half the battle, it's just showing up to work. Once you're showing up, track your personal progress. Not follower counts or ratings because that will make you feel like you're at a standstill. Instead, track your panel count or progress on writing an episode or 
Character designs, you know, something that you are personally in direct control of. This probably goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Limit your distractions during this time you've set for your comic work. If your phone distracts you, put it on Do Not Disturb. If it's your kids, make your comic time slot before they wake up or after they go to bed for the night. Or see if your partner, family, or friends can watch them for an hour for you. Make that time where you can chill out and work on your comic as appealing as possible. You can also, and I say this as a shy person who takes 20 minutes to craft a text in Discord when I talk to people because I'm anxious about making friends, but you can also make friends with other artists who will uplift you. Much like a non-toxic gym buddy or fitness group, you can hold each other accountable and help push each other to reach small goals. Speaking of goals, having healthy, achievable goals will also help your motivation. Think of it like stepping stones. If you have smaller, short-term goals that you can make lots of progress in, there's less distance to jump between those stepping stones. And each goal reached will give you the confidence and more motivation until you look back and say, wow, I've come a long way since that first step. Some examples of small achievable goals are completing a panel, like literally just a single panel can be a goal, Uh, just shooting for one panel per work session, deciding on a character's outfit or a location for a background, getting a short episode uploaded in the schedule in in Webtoon, or even just uh, writing a scene out. So these are all small achievable goals that you have direct control over and they can just they can help you with your motivation the big lofty goals are great and all but small achievable ones are definitely where it's at and are going to help you the most with your motivation especially if you're trying to get the ball rolling again example eight you don't even want to draw anymore it's a heavier topic especially for an artist but it is one that I see asked about a lot. Like I've been saying in this video so far, you need to ask yourself why. Why do I not want to draw anymore? And be honest with yourself. There was a time where I didn't want to draw anymore. I was in college pursuing a degree in graphic design and I was up to my ears in projects, deadlines, and stress. It was a weird time considering half of my classes were fine art related, but there I was, so incredibly burnt out that I didn't have the bandwidth to even draw for fun anymore. Assignments were assignments, and my anime style drawings sat in my sketchbook, collecting dust on the shelf. My first legitimate comic that I had written sat next to it, with the first couple of pages sketched out, and the story marked up from a previous semester's fiction writing class. And it stayed covered up because that year I had decided that I didn't want to draw anymore. I still continued to work on assignments and pass all my classes and eventually got my bachelor's degree in fine art with a concentration in graphic design and digital media. But I, I felt empty. After graduating, I suddenly had more free time than I knew what to do with myself and a degree that I was struggling to admit I never wanted. I would only truly admit that much later, but that's a story for another video, probably. Old habits die hard, and I found myself reaching for that dusty sketchbook again. The world seemed a little less scary for a fresh post-grad when I could express myself through drawing, and I found myself drawing for fun again. Looking back at it, deciding not to draw anymore wasn't a set-in-stone thing, but it devastated me when I thought I would never want to draw for fun again. If I had stubbornly held on to it during that busy time in my life, though, I probably would have ended up hating it. So I don't regret giving it up for a while, 
and in fact, I gave up drawing for a good chunk of 2020 while I focused on raising my newborn son. So the takeaway for this hang up is that if you don't want to draw anymore, stop. Take a vacation from it, and if you need a vacation from your vacation, do that. Explore other creative outlets. Being an artist is a funny thing. Just because you're not drawing doesn't mean you're not creating. Your outlet has shifted to something else, at least for a time. It might be cooking new recipes, developing characters to roleplay in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, or becoming your toddler's personal photographer. You still end up doing something creative while you're not drawing. And if I've learned anything from my own experiences, you'll come back to it when you want to draw again. That comic that was collecting dust from college, the stuff I learned from making that comic formed the foundation for Fairy Lantern. And who knows, maybe later down the road, that story will see the light of day. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. Ooh, getting a little heavy there at the end. <laughs> uh, I need water. Uh, uh. <laughs> So yeah, I hope this advice video will help you guys if you're going through a tough time on your comic making adventure. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, be sure to leave a like and drop a comment down below. And if you're curious about this painting I was working on during the video, it's part of the Spring Equinox collab that I got to be a part of, hosted by the creator of Celestis. And the video will be linked right here. Prints and stickers are available on my Redbubble shop. The link will be down in the description if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye!